It's alive! Yay! Hopefully you can hear the uh, microphone. Goes alive right as he needs the sneeze. What is the crack? Welcome to another... Hold on, swig of tea. Hopefully that will keep the sneeze away. Welcome to another hobby hangout. We have today our MS-06 Zaku 2 Red Comet. Um, which is a pretty intricate build. I'm not a uh, not used to these builds on the old uh, Gundams. Hopefully you can all hear me. Hey, Essex boys is here. What's the story, uh, Clive? <laughs> Clint, what's the crack, bud? How are you, man? How was the How was the head after the uh, recording session? We had a recording session during the week. We won't ruin any surprises and go into details, but there was a. There was a bit of a gathering of individuals online and it was uh, entertainment at its finest, I have to say. Can you hear me all right there, Clint? How's the audio coming through? All okay? All in all, we've had a pretty cracking good day here in Dublin, uh, Sunday. Today is Sunday, the 25th. Um, yeah, nice day. We've had like really sh sunshiny days, N nice sunshine. I've managed to kill a fly on my travels. It's like good sunshine, but it's been very cool. So when the sun sets, it gets very cold very quickly. Not much overcast. Not many clouds to reflect the heat back and keep it in. But uh, yeah, overall, look, the weather's been pretty cracking here, man. Oh, good, mate. Not as bad aside, I'm sure. Oh, sweet, man. How's the weather over in the UK? In the Ingalands? He's having the, the same. Like, it, we've had good enough weather that my mother has had to give me, like, now you keep that in your car there now. Don't be getting sunburnt. You know what I mean? Because I got me, I managed to get a bit too much sun on the old uh, bald knob. You know what I mean? And uh, it's it's grand now. It wasn't too bad. But I need to invest. I need to invest in a decent hat. Where's me hat? I've got a got like a fucking it's got a f fedora cap type thing or a, a hat I bought when I was in uh, Normandy. But it's made out of paper, so I can't really wash it. But I need to get myself like. Um, a decent baseball cap, you know what I mean? Just a, you know, just a decent cap. I need to get my hands on one of them, and uh, just for you know, when you get you get to the stage of, uh, you know, being challenged there, uh, follically, is follicles hairs? I can't remember the specifically, but whatever. When you when you don't have as much, you know, toiling on the roof, all right, you really need to be sort of aware of the old sunshine. So, you know. Sun cream is is a must have. So uh, usually I actually have to put that back. Me old factor thirty, um, I need to put that back in the car because boy Jesus, you like you want to see me legs out? It's there's like two milk bottles holding the rest of me up. They are as white as sheets, man. Um, I don't think my legs have seen sunlight in about four or five years. So it it kind it kind of shows. But uh, yeah, I need I need to get myself a decent cap. I definitely need to get myself a decent cap. It's a, uh, that's on the list of of to do. Walking and saying, Chalik Bollocksley. So if I get a mesh, mesh cap to create unique suntan on top, I'll get like the grid pattern just sort of burned in. People will be looking at you from a distance. What the, what's wrong with your head? Ah, it's just the cap. We, the trucker caps. I know the ones you're on about where they've got, they've got the design on the front and then it's mesh for a bit of air circulation. Hmm, I don't know. We might be onto something there. Angus Goodleaf is here. Hey, hi from Quebecistan. What's the crack, man? How are things? I've tried Lorcan. I did listen to your, I did listen to your, um, advice about like organizing the sprues and the box, but it all, it all went peak tongue again. I'm, I'm just, I can't be keeping myself super organized. I don't know what it is. I have a few little bits and pieces I've uh, managed to acquire from our last stream. So when I bought this guy, I bought it off of the. Dublin City Comics, and I ordered a few other bits and pieces. I'm sure I showed you. Like I, I'm a lazy bollocks when it comes to this. So I want to do box openings, but I never get around to recording them. So then eventually I just build them. Like originally I was like, oh, I'll do like a build video for this. And now I've, I've had it for months and months. And uh, the Grey Primer channel, he did his, uh, his Gundam build. And then he reminded me, oh, yeah, I've got one of these half built on a box. It'd be fun to crack on with it. Uh, and that's how I've been building this. So, uh, there you go. That's what we've been cracking on. Oh, mesh cap so I can play battleships on me noggin. Yeah. 
Well, you know, it could be worse. You could, don't be asking your mates to put sun cream on your back when you're away on a holiday. You were just asking for, like, a phallus to be drawn or someone to be praying, playing, like, uh, uh, knots and crosses on your back. That's the last thing you bleed and need, you know what I mean? You go back with a sunburn and something stupid burnt into you by design. But sure, what are friends for? You know what I mean? So I have a few other t- bits and pieces. I got uh, the basic tool set from Tamiya. I think it cost me 30 quid. I Actually, it didn't cost me 30. I got a couple of quid off. But um, I wanted to try this box set out. I haven't really tried it. And uh, see if the snips is any better than the old GW ones I have. Or these are just sort of generic ones. But GW used to just sell the snips. And uh, you can see where I abused it by trying to cut paper clips many, many years ago. Don't be cutting paper clips with your snips. All right? This metal is softer than... The metal that's used in paper clips. Big now, now. Don't be cutting paper clips. All right, get a proper like industrial snips, and have a crack at it. So I want to try the snips out of this one. It seems uh seems pretty lightweight. I like the idea of this. I read. Really, I think this was more something I bought because I liked the look of it. But I was, I was thinking to myself, if you know, if I'm ever going to con- conventions, and you know, something needs repairing or, you know, you want to do a build at a convention. This seems like a really, I like, I like the kit. Like it's a, it's a really compact little kit. It's nice. It's all just, you know, basic tools, all self-contained. You got your tweezers, you got your foil. I, I thought it was pretty sweet looking. You got a decent knife as well. It's a, it's an alpha knife. Uh, I've bought the, a circular cutters. When I was in Paris, I went into, um, there's like an art supply store in Paris when I was there many years ago. And they had some of this uh, Alpha stuff as well. It's all made in Japan, but I bought like a circular cutter. Now, it wasn't cheap, but like it's really good for scoring your plastic art and stuff. So the, these are good blades. I know the blades are good. So good good little uh, little handy dandy travel kit. I, don't, I have no idea what the foil's going to be like um, compared to like the basic foils that Tommy do. Um, we'll see, but... Uh, We'll give it a bash, but I'd be interested to see what the snips is like at least. I reckon this is for like RC people as well, guys who do like remote control cars if they're including screwdrivers and stuff, or maybe people screw their, uh, their, uh, like their, oh my brain's not working today. They're like airfix kits or something. Maybe you have to anchor some of your kits together with screws, I'm thinking. I don't know. I can't really see myself using screwdrivers. Once you screwdrivers always come in handy, you know? There's always something what needs fixing or, you know, repairing or this has come loose. I'm not, I don't know about the rest of you, but when you get into the hobby where you build stuff all the time and you're forever using glues to glue stuff together, um, I wonder if you guys have become like the go-to guy in your family. Like anytime something intricate is broken, it gets brought to me. If something needs to be glued back together, it gets brought to me. If something needs to be screwed back together... Maybe, like, a plug needs rewiring. They bring it to me. Now, I'm not big into electronics, but I like f- fixing things. And because of the hobby and stuff, all these type of things always get brought to me. So I wonder if any of you guys end up uh, becoming the, the sort of de facto repair guy in, in your family when it comes to, you know, something needing to be re-glued or, or put back together. Um, S6 is saying he needs to get some new snips. Yeah, well, snips are something that I think some people tend to overlook i'll be interested to see what these ones are like um we'll see how it goes but at least they're a little bit sharper than the ones i was previously using i work say oh man i found the most amazing hobby shop in this run down little shopping center in fungarola in spain i think i've been to fungarola in spain oh i love when you find stuff like that especially old school shops that are still going and they'll have like they'll have stuff that's just not stocked anymore because it just hasn't sold it's like it's sitting on their shelf and it just hasn't sold. And you're like, they stopped making these like 12 years ago. I'll take them all, please. <laughs> you find some absolutely cracking stuff. Perfect for RC stuff. Yeah, I figured as much. I figured it was like, they'd give you screwdrivers for doing uh, RC kits. I, I figured that's what it was. Loads of really nice tools and accessories. Oh, you'd be surprised. like, And you last, especially when you come across a tool and you're like, what? what's this for? You know? And they'll explain it to you. Or if you find a tool and you're like, ooh, I haven't seen one of them before, but you know what it is? Yeah. So if I was saying, I think Tamiya kits can be motorized. You used to be able to do the tanks anyway. That's what I was figuring. I was figuring there's prob- it's probably like 
a kit that's been put together as a catch-all. So it would be like model hobbyists, RC guys, you know, bit of a catch-all kit. Um, that will facilitate a lot of people. But like I said, screwdrivers always come in handy. Always. You can never not need a decent screwdriver. It's always good to have one on handy. I don't have a letterman. I should probably look into getting a multi-tool. A decent multi-tool. That's probably something I should uh, invest in. Right, so. On to the MS-06. Is there an S at the end of that? There is. S. Zaku 2. Red Comet build. So this is as far as we got the last time. Um, I was having fun with this arm when I was making the thumbnail, sort of a hang in there for the weekend type of vibe I was going for. So we've got the arm done and it's got a shed load of bits in it uh, with two legs and the other arm to do. So the next on our build list, according to the instructions, is going to be the right arm. So we're going to crack on with the right arm. I am, I have to say, thoroughly enjoying building these kits. And I love the fact that they're already colored. So you don't have to paint them if you don't want to. Um, but you can do if you do want to. But I've been messing around with some of the uh, panel liner markers. Don't know how well that's coming up for you guys. On the grey sprue, probably not great. There's a bit of a shame. But I've been mucking around. So I've been trying to decide if I want to use grey on the grey plastic or if I want to use black. I haven't quite decided which. This part here is grey. This one here is black in the sort of uh, the little kind of these, these tiny ones here. So I went out and I got like Gundam markers as well. So they're little for plastic model kits. They're little sort. They're like felt tip pens, kind of. You know what I mean? It's pretty much what they are, felt tip pens. And I was like, that'll come in handy. But I was also thinking, might be good for BattleTech. I don't know if they're too big or not. Or maybe like a five minute challenge for doing orcs. And uh, I've heard of people using like uh, metallic sharpies for doing edge height like it. So they'll do the base colours, and then if they wanted this to look metallic, they'll get like a, a metallic sharpie, and they'll do edges for like metallic chipping or whatever. So I've seen people doing some absolutely crazy stuff with them. But we'll see how it goes. You know yourself. No harm in experimenting and seeing how things come together. It'll, uh, you can always learn something new, you know what I mean? I'm sure there's like the Gundam, because you do Gundam kits, you can learn something off them. You can learn something off scale model dudes. There's... A lot of crossover uh, between them, so don't be afraid to like pick up something that's intended from one product and bring it over. Or if it's a, a pr beauty product, like there's a lot of scale model guys who do um, a lot of weathering with uh, like uh, makeup brushes and um, like cheap ones. Like even if you look at some of the rust palette kits, they look pretty much look like makeup palettes where you'll have your three colors. If you ever look at your missus makeup box and you're trying to like I don't know steal a decent tweezers to put something together. They, they have like color palettes that will come with brushes and stuff and it's like that that's pretty much used um you can pretty much find similar products for scale modeling and stuff where they'll sell the uh the weathering palettes and it's the same sort of thing so i'm looking for the d sprue here i did put them alphabetically see Dorkin, i do listen sometimes not all the time sometimes sometimes i do listen so i'm cracking on with the d sprue here we need one to four off of this guy. So these dudes here. We'll be cracking on with. Funkerol is in the Costa del Sol, a bit more upmarket than Della Bella Medina and Toro Molinas. I think I've been to all these places um on family holidays. I used to love nothing better than finding like Warhammer or like a scale model like i remember like finding a a sword shop that just sold like novelty sort of touristy tat but they also had some some decent swords as well and i remember they had like replica lord of the ring swords um went on a sunshiny holiday at one point but it's mostly like the the canary islands my family used to bring us to the canary islands um Spain or Portugal, you know, some shiny holidays, those type of things. I haven't been on one of them in a very long time. I'm sure the, the missus would love to do something like that once the uh, once the lockdown is lifted. Probably next summer. Can't really see it being this summer, to be honest with you. 
wait for everyone to be vaccinated and then I'm sure the prices will skyrocket as demand goes through the roof, as is the nature of these things. Put that sprue back. And we'll have a look at the cuts. They seem to be a bit better anyway. They're not too bad. Seems alright. She's not too bad. Still not alright. Got a fantastic old school model railway and scale electrics place near me. Sandwich of awesome stuff packed into such a small place. We have something like that in Dublin, which is called um, Marx models. We have a few. There's, um, uh, I think there's a. I'm trying to think of them. There's there's Marx models. That's on the south side, down along the keys. I forget the name of the street that it's on. I know there's another model shop on the south side uh, of the Liffey. When we say so it's north or south side, it's like north or south of the River Liffey. The River Liffey runs through Dublin, if you're not familiar with it. And it's sort of, uh, that's that, you know, that's what the city was based up and around. That's where the city got its name, was uh, Dublin, pretty much coming off of like Dove Lane or the Blackpool that used to be up. That's pretty much what Dublin means is like, Blackpool of sorts or something like that. I'm sure I'm butchering the history, but it's a rough... You know what I mean? You're getting a crash course off of me. You know? I'm not the most uh, educated when it comes to uh, history. I know a little bit. But yeah, there's the there's a couple of them. So there's the Marx models, which is down near along the... Uh, is it, I don't think it's Brundrick Street. I know. I don't think so. Um, On the south side. They do a lot of stuff like that in, in Dublin City. They do a lot of like Hornby kits. They have a lot of scan model kits. They're really good for getting evergreen uh, styrene. So like if you're looking for styrene rod or sheet styrene and a lot of the scenic stuff. So like the, a lot of their, their bread and butter from what I s seem, the perception I get is like they do a lot of train stuff. They do scale electric stuff. They do like scale models as well. Um, wouldn't be a bad idea to go in and talk to them when everything goes back to normal. Um, they do a lot of stuff like that. I know there's a model shop up on Thomas Street um, that I kept driving past when I was in work because I noticed they had like a, a hind helicopter kit in the window and I've always been, hmm, I don't know what it is about that Russian helicopter, but it's, you know, it floats me boat in all the right ways. So I've, I've, I've always thrown my eye past that. I've never gone into it. It's uh, somewhere I need to go into um, but yeah, I'd like to go in there and have a look and see what kits they have. Then there's the model shop on Cable Street. I've been in there a couple of times. Um, he seems to have, like, from what I gather, a lot of bolts of wood and stuff uh, and bits and pieces. I know he had some army painter stuff. I bought some army painter paint when I went in there. Um, he had, like, remote control submarines on display and... And that sort of thing. I think he's, I, uh, you know, I could be wrong, but he seems to be uh, more sort of focused on remote control stuff. I don't know if they all specialize in stuff or not. But uh, there's a, yeah, there's a couple of model shops in Dublin itself. And hopefully they're all still there by the end of all this. And we're putting that bitch into there. And this is for our arm that we're building. So these are like those pieces here. So we're building sort of like the elbow joint. It hides this really well. I have to say I'm rather impressed with this part of the kit where it hides this really well because on so many other uh, Zaku kits I have, those joins are, you know, visually a bit a bit stark. But uh, like I have to say the arm build is, is way better. I noticed another thing. His head is slightly smaller. Maybe he's in scale with himself a bit more. But I've... I've got this guy like kneeling down, ready for a diorama I have in mind, which is why I bought some of the other Gundam kits. I got some of the basic Gundam kits. These uh, snap snap fit entry grades. I have an idea for a little diorama I want to do, so I'll be, you know, putting that together another time. But for now, we're trying to focus on our Zaku's or our mono eyes, uh, mainly because I like the look of them. I think they're pretty cool. Mm -mm -mm. What could I say? You can get an airbrush that uses Gundam markers. If you know Sharky, he got one and thought it was okay. He uses Gundam markers. Hmm. So, 
instead of like it accepting a gravity well, you put the marker into it. I take it. That sounds kind of interesting. Um, are the pens acrylic? I have no idea. I don't think they're acrylic. Like I've more markers here. Um, I have no idea what the Japanese for acrylic is. Don't know. Anybody else knows? Like literally everything is in Japanese, so it's like, eh? No idea. Made in Japan for plastic kits. That's the only bit I can really read. No idea. You can clean off the excess with water. Oh, there you go. Lower can answer it. Nice to be good for making checkers, flames. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. As soon as I got the... As soon as I picked up the markers, I was thinking to myself, surely these can be used on a... Warhammer minis. You know? I'm sure... Especially when it comes to people who are looking to just get an army on the table. You know what I mean? There has to be tricks that you can port over. Because what was I looking at? I got a... I don't know. Where, yeah, here, look. I got a free pamphlet. So I ordered some Battletech stuff. I got the Elementals. I bought two box sets of Elementals for Battletech. Ooh, hands are super shaky for some reason. So I bought some Elementals. These are sort of like... Um, Power armor dudes with jetpacks and built-in lasers and missile pods. This one's missing his missile pods on the back because he's supposed to have fired them. They're supposed to be like one and duns. You fire them, fire and forget type stuff. So I bought a couple of blister packs of these um, uh, because, you know, I didn't really buy, I get many of them in the Kickstarter. I do have a massive stuff, load of stuff from the Kickstarter coming in. But... Besides the point, when I ordered that, I got this free sort of army painter guide where it's sort of like spray, paint, dip, their technique of getting armies done quickly. And I was thinking, you know, that the markers, these markers could be like a great way of getting stuff done quickly as well. If you're trying to do like what army painter are doing where it's a game, game aim, probably aim for games where people are just trying to get a lot of stuff done. These would be great for like... Doing quick shading in the recesses and stuff instead of having to use a whole bottle of wash or whatever. But it's, you know, I don't know. I'm just trying to think outside the box. You know what I mean? What can I say? My parents have an apartment in Marbella. So my wife and I go out there every year or two. And they only have to pay for flights and feel. Ah, oh, dude. Very jealous. Nice. Are they retired out there, Lorcan, or did they come back to Ireland? Like, do they still have a place here or are they still are they living out there full time? So I know a lot of comics and gaming and hobby shops all across the south of Spain, thanks to exploration. Yeah, that's cool, man. Like Spain has a Spain has a good sort of uh, industry going as well. That's where really like all the Vallejo stuff. I'm sure when I'm saying Vallejo, I'm butchering the pronunciation, but you know, it is what it is. Is that one on Thomas Street, the one beside James's Hospital? They have a ton of BattleTech minis. Uh yes, I think the one on Thomas Street is the. It's just called Models. It's up along the Lewis line. Up and along the Lewis line, I think. I'm trying to remember the names of streets. Correctly. Which can be difficult at times. Uh, that guy goes that way. Am I putting this on the correct orientation? I am. So that goes there. That's going to be his lower forearm. Doing an awful lot of chatting here and not very much building. But we'll get through it. Hold on, I'll get this nubbin off and then uh, try not to cut my finger and uh, go from there. I'm looking forward to getting games of Battletech in again. Some of the guys are already talking about the initiative deck that comes out. About using that in games. I'm, I really want to get games of Battletech going again. You know what I mean? It'd be great crack. I do miss playing Battletech. I've been dabbling with a 40k in tabletop simulator, and it's it's all right. Like, but like, my go-to at the moment is uh, you know, someone gave me an option to play a war game. It's really about Battletech for me. I just like how the game plays. I think it'd be hilarious if we did like a did an epic scale crossover between like 40k orcs and Battletech stuff. I think that would be absolutely hilarious. Where you know. The orcs jump into the the warp and end up in like a pocket dimension, and then 
like a Battletech, uh, a Battletech jump ship sort of uh, has a misjump and they both end up in sort of a pocket dimension fighting each other. You know what I mean? You could have fun with that. That'd be cool. We'd have a, uh, you'd have your mix fighting against like Stampers and stuff like that or Gorkonauts and all. That would be hilarious. Or like the orcs loot a mech and then they uh, just orcify it so it's got like orky glyphs. Like, I, I think that would be cool. I don't know about anyone else. <laughs> Tinakani, if that's how you pronounce your name, I'm not too sure, mate. Um, Essex is saying, I'm sitting and listening and trying to finish painting up Val Valrak Gulcher. Oh, for the Blood Bowl, sir. Yeah, you were saying that uh, it's a really good set. I will. I was tempted to buy it, but like I already have too much stuff. I really, I could see myself buying it. Like the price point on it was really good, but uh, yeah, I already have too much stuff. D two number six, and our polycap sprue next. So we need number six, and we need our A sprue. Um, yeah, like I've I've got the um. Got the orc team off of the last blood ball kit, and I bought uh, just the uh, an orc team again, so we could have uh, like four. I think I have four blitzers, four black orcs, a thrower, and the rest are linemen. Um, in that team, so I, I built that one together. S five. Where's five go? Is five going to be used anytime soon? When I just sort of preemptively. That's number six. No. Eh. I don't know when five gets used. But, uh, yeah, Blood Bowl. I haven't tried the new edition, but I'd be more than happy to give it a go. Yeah, we've seen the markers are alcohol based. That's not bad. And then we should be able to thin them down a bit without the scolor in them. Look, I was working on my affinity to find skies earlier. I nearly finished with the enemy models for mission one. Can't wait. I have never played Infinity. It looks cool. The only thing I know about Infinity is from what I've been told from other 40k players at the time, saying that it needs a lot of terrain on the table. Um, that's literally all I know about Infinity. Um, I've seen some of the miniatures. I've seen some of the painting guides that uh, some of the dudes do. Some of the Vallejo painting guides for Infinity stuff, and it looks cracking. Um, but I, I literally have I've never played Infinity. Maybe that's... Uh, Something I could do. Maybe me polycap sprue. I could give it a bash sometime. I am not afraid to try new games, but persuading me to buy into it may be a different matter. There is no persuading needed for Battletech. That is my jam. While still collecting 40k orcs, because you there's no harm in a crossover. It's a bit of cross pollination, you know what I mean? So we've got our polycap sprue, and that bit goes in there. And then I'm going to need my A sprue now. So A1, I need parts 6 and 7. And Muggins here still hasn't put them alphabetically. Oh, I have actually. Oh, Jesus, there we go. Look. There's A1. And um, we had a power cut the other day uh, when I was chilling. And I was like, ah, what will I do on myself? My computer and my internet are down. You know what I mean? I know I wasn't really getting much signal on the phone, so I was trying to uh, trying to crack on and read some Battletech novels because of a fat stack of them, but I'm a lazy bastard when it comes to reading. So I started reading Warrior on Guard. Um, and I, you know, I did read it. I started reading the book and I got in a chapter or two, but it's been so long since I actually bothered to finish reading the rest of it that I just started the book again. You know what I mean? I'm forever doing that sort of thing the only time i've read a book and i've stuck with it and read it the whole way through was um a couple of novels um mostly um terry pratchett stuff like the I've, I've got a load of them but i've only read a few of them but like the life fantastic and the color of magic i apps they're the only that's the only time i've ever read a book and then like read it twice i'm really i really enjoyed those books and um, there's a few there's a few books that i read um, I liked um, some of C.L. Werner stuff he used to do. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. He used to do a lot of, um, I don't know if he still writes them, but a lot of Warhammer fantasy books. Um, so what was there? There's Palace of the Plague Lord or something like that. Or 
there was a few books that he did. I like the style of writing, so I bought I bought anything with that he wrote for, for the Warhammer universe universe back in the day, and uh, I remember enjoying his books as well. And um, what else is there? I don't know. I don't read a lot. I should read a lot more. But I spend most of my time on YouTube or mucking about. I really should read more. I know there's an orc series that someone wrote up that I probably would like to uh, get into. It's not 40k orc base. It's just sort of orcs. It just depends on the writer. I know I tried to read The Lord of the Rings when I was younger. And I just gave up. I was like, Jesus. You know, Tolkien was like... It just took so long for the books to get it. Like, I, I, I don't even think I read... Maybe they got as far as Tom Bombadil, and I was like, bollocks to this. Just the pace of it was... Like, he talk, you know, there, we're talking about going to the forest. And we'll prepare about talking to go to the forest. Then we'll go to the forest, and then it's like, oh, my God. He just took a year and a day to get into it. But uh, I really should try to read Lord of the Rings again. <laughs> I really should. A lot of things I should be doing. Be concentrating on building and talking less. So I don't lose bits of me fingers. Right, so that's going in there. Right. And then this is part A1, number six. And this is another shoulder piece. And we'll crack on with that. Now, sorry, chat. Let's have a look. Bo -bo -bo. So if I was saying GW's new product, Marine Armor Highlighter Marker, 20 quid a pop, don't. Laugh, so I don't be giving them ideas, man. <laughs> Probably. Tommy was saying, I use some alcohol markers for highlighting the new Plague Marines. The pens helped a lot with so many edge highlights. How do they keep, Tommy? Because I know some people use some markers and they're not, um, they're not designed for longevity. Like, they the ink can fade after a while. Um, I know they're, what's the terminology that's used when, you, when you're buying markers? Oh, it's not a museum. It's like, um, there's a specific term that's used for ink that won't really fade as badly. I forget the terminology. It's like, um, it's got something to do with storage, but I forget. I, I can't think of the terminology at this moment in time. We're looking for sprue E1. Beep, beep, boo. D. Sprues E. A. Right, so, E1, we're looking for f 13, 14, and 15. Be -de -de -de. These like graves look cool, man. 13, 14, and 15, so this end of the sprue. Being careful not to cut the tabs off. I love that in the instructions. They're super, like, these tabs here, they're really, like, don't cut them off. <laughs> Like, they're, they're really like, don't cut, nine. Because it's that important. It must be a common issue, which I'm finding amusing. Uh, uh, I mean, the snips is all right, but it's not, it's not amazing. Maybe I should be getting a... Like, I didn't realize the Gundam people are big into their snips, like, big time, because of the fact that a lot of people don't actually paint all over them. So, like, when you're wargaming, you know, this type of thing wouldn't bother you too much. You just get the knife out, and if there's discoloration with the plastic, you're going to be painting over the miniature. Whereas, I can understand the logic behind it then and wanting a snips that doesn't leave a mark because you don't want the plastic to be distressed because the majority of these kits don't get painted. So, if there's, like, distress on the plastic, it's going to show. Um, I found that very interesting. It was a, yeah, it was a very interesting insight. I was like, ah, so if they, yeah, it makes sense that they'd have, like, all these super swanky, expensive snips that are designed to mitigate the effects of cutting stuff off. Um, I, I just found that very amusing. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Leave me polycap sprue there. 
Um, Essex is saying, how is Infinity to play? I always like the look of it, but here it's super complicated. Look, I'm saying it's got a lot of edge case rules and that adds complexity, but the basic rules are simple enough. They have a cut down version of the game now called Code One. That's pretty cool. The rules and all the units stats are free online. Finds as a co op dungeon crawler game set in the universe, like Rebel Assault kind of thing. Too many old school Battletech players used to do a 40k versus Battletech game like Galecon using Dirt Side 2 rules back in the day. It was always pretty cool. It would be pretty cool. Like, we've got 3D printers now, so we can literally print Battletech stuff in 40k scale. So I think it would be cool to have orcs fighting some Battletech stuff. I think that would be cool. Uh, but Essex is saying he'll have a look up if order. My god, Essex. A man of many hats. Got his finger in many pies he does. Fair play to you, bud. That'd be pretty cool. Um, so if I was saying, has anyone done a mod for PC Battletech to orky stuff? Oh, you mean like um like Make Warrior 5? Like new skins? That'd be cool. I'm sure there's probably like mods for arma 3 or something like that that people have reskinned i think i've seen <laughs> versions that they've done that with orcs so they've got someone who's doing a mod for orcs and then someone who's doing a, doing a mod for uh for battle tech the crossover happiness right there don't know yourself did that work Saying loves the new Black Orc team. The addition of goblins makes them super fun to play. They do look cool, man. I do like that new Vara Gulchur. Saying he loves Terry Pratchett. Mort is one of my favorite books. Have not read Mort yet. Funnily enough, I have not read it. I own it. I just have not read it. I've got like a box in my mother's attic where. Um, I think of about 20 or 25 Terry Pratchett books. I used to always go into... Oh, what's that bookstore called that's gone now? It wasn't Holland and Barrett, but I had like a green... Um, was it Wa Waterstones? It might have been Waterstones. I used to go into a, the bookstore anytime and just buy books. Um, All the time, like. My grandmother was like, why don't you just get like a library card? It's like, ah, it's not the same, Granny, you know what I mean? It's not the same. But, um, yeah, I bought a load of them before they changed the covers. I think they changed them to, like, blank. So, uh, there was, um, I started buying Terry Pratchett books when they were all that, um, the art. It was a weird kind of art style, but it was super cartoony and colourful and awesome. I remember as a kid picking up a Terry Pratchett book just for the cover and looking at it. It's a pity I didn't start reading it then. I would have been about 12 or something at the time, but it caught my attention. And I think it was Pyramids. There was like a, a camel and there was like an assassin and then there was like a woman there or something like that. And there was a lot of pyramids in the background. So I think it was like the, the Pyramids book. But I, th I, I can distinctly remember picking it up and just looking at it and uh, reading the description when I was younger. But like I said, it's a pity I didn't get into reading this stuff then. Pratchett stuff is hilarious. Mm. So I was saying, Scar, you should scratch build a Mega Dread of a plastic card based on an Annihilator. Oh, but it'd be super slow, man. The Annihilator is absolutely like snail's pace slow. I'm not really into slow mix. As you can tell. Like, my favourite clan mech I've come across so far is the Grendel. I absolutely love that mech. But that's... I may be biased. It, it might be because I destroyed someone's dreams during our Galecon playthrough. Where I took down a Madcar Prime with it. And I was like, yep. Fun. But also felt bad at the same time. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm, I'm beating you with a lighter mech here, bud. Uh, whoops. What can you do? Fit you bastard. Don't fit. Remember folks, when in doubt, brute force is always the answer. Fill that down a bit. Ha! Snog. 
right okay what do i feel like i put this in anyways no apparently not all right those nubbins go there it goes there all right there's a gap there is the other arm like that the other arm is indeed like that all right never worry never fear all right so that's going to be the shoulder connection so we'll put the arm in there Hmm. Not too happy about this. Why is this not connecting great? Is that right? Should be right. Mm hmm. Didn't have difficulty with the other one. They just sort of went together pretty easily. Is this supposed to push back up a bit? I think so. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Clicked. Now it's snug. I used to have this problem with my job when I was being like a mobile security guard where you'd get somewhere, all right? And you'd have to, you'd be using like keys on these old school locks. And if you're not used to opening and closing a lock on the daily, like say if there's a knack to opening or closing your door lock, right, that you know that you need to put in a certain amount of force. These are things like you won't really think of, but when you come to a lock for the first time and, you ha and you're you not used to the knack of it, you have this kind of fear of snapping the key in the lock because that's the last thing you want to do. Now, I no longer do this job, but I'm just going into this sort of tangent of detail that sort of ties into my reluctance to just brute force this piece in. When you come up to a lock that has a knack to open it, you don't want to snap the key in the lock because that required calling out a locksmith, calling the key holder, you know, you look like an idiot then. You have to, you know what I mean? The company had to pay for stuff. So you had to kind of put a bit of force in, but not too much force. So there was that kind of reluctance, which is what that just reminded me of there, where it's like, I need to get this piece in, but I also don't want to break it at the same time. You know what I mean? So that, uh, there you go. Reminds me of my job, my previous job. The Lock and I'm saying I've got two Battletech books in the immediate to be read stack plus an anthology of short stories set in Leviathans. But I'm reading a Fire Upon the Deep for an online book club right now. It's really good. When building Gundams, the arms and legs are almost always symmetrical. So I save time by building both of them at the same time. Ah, uh, yeah, well that yeah, that would kind of make sense. I'm just sort of following the instructions where it's like left arm and then it's straight away it's telling me right arm. <gasps> so I'm just following it that way. But I can understand getting comfortable with them. And doing both builds at the same time. Definitely with this going through the sprues, I could see it's like, well, if I'm going to need this bit for this arm, I'm building both of them at the same time and snipping everything off. That, uh, that would save time. So, A1. I'm going to need 13, 12, and 11. Whoops, broke a bit off. A1. This one. I kind of have a rough idea of what bits I'm going to need now at this stage, anyway. So that's like the sort of greave on the front of the arm. And these are kind of the elbow protection joint parts. Which are funsies. I've come across a dilemma. I'm like, I'm enjoying building this, but I'm, you know... What does one do with Gundam kits once they are complete? Do they just sort of sit around? You know what I mean? At least with um, Wargaming Miniatures, my brain is like, oh, well, at least it's for a game. Whereas these, I'm like, um, what do we do with it now? You know? Like I'm, I'm sure there's someone must have come up with a war game to use with these guys. I'd be very surprised if they haven't. Be very surprised. I need B1. No, that's H3. Aha. This piece. I'd be very surprised if there wasn't a war game for them. Uh, 
A six is saying, how gently does it? Oh, yeah, me. I've snapped a key in a lock before in a train station. And I used the old uh, super glue and baking soda trick. So I literally went, popped off to a shop, bought a tub of super glue, bought some baking soda. What did I do? I coated because like, I had half a key. The key snapped in half. So I had half a key. And I managed to get it out of, it was like for a shutter. So they're like boxes. They're like boxes with like a left, tw- left will put it up and right will turn it down. And I managed to do the old baking soda and super glue trick where I dipped the key in baking soda. Then I put like a layer of super glue on it. And then I put barely enough super glue to coat the key and then sort of held it in back in place. And I managed to actually get it to glue together and come out again. But then I, I tried my luck too much. I tried to open two, two more shutters with it. And then it, it sort of snapped in the, the last one and, and gave up the ghost. But more importantly, I managed to get all the shutters open for the train station. Which was the important thing. But uh, yeah, their maintenance team came out and sorted it out eventually. But that was, you know, that was my MacGyver moment. I was pretty proud of that. I've had a few hours in my time. If I do say so myself. Thinking outside the box and having fun. <coughs> Grey Primer saying, Sorry I'm late. That's the weirdest looking orc I've ever seen. <laughs> well, you know, red ones go faster and also. Are you, are you surprised? We're not just 40k orc content around here. You know what I mean, Nick? We're not just 40k orcs. And as I was saying to the guys earlier who are watching now, this is kind of your fault with your gun and build. You're reminding me that I had a I had a Zaku kit what needed building. Um, I need to apologize to Lorcan and Nick about Wednesday. I did mean to go into you guys for your IGA hangout, but uh, I got caught up with a recording that I thought would only take two hours and lasted like five. <laughs> uh, so there's always next Wednesday, lads. I'll try and uh, I shall endeavor to join there. I reckon I'll have this kit built by then. But uh, it'd be cool. Which bit goes on first? That one goes on first, and then that second bit goes on there. See, I like that. I like the detail here. It covers up that join that I really don't like on those other Zaku kits. <laughs> he's saying he's taking a break after building Tau all weekend for the greater good. My hoop. <laughs> No one to blame but yourself, Nick. No one to blame but yourself. The greater good. Jesus. Tell of all things. I think I even have a tower hammerhead that I got in a trade years and years and years ago. Like I'm talking 2010 or something. It's another one of those kits that I sort of got in a trade off of someone. And it's like, oh yeah, I'll loot that eventually. And I still have it stashed away. Like it was before they redid the tow tanks. Do you know the way they redid like the Devil Fish uh, troop transport. And they put like drones in them. Unnecessarily. You know what I mean? They just put like a drone in the center of it. It's not a bad touch actually. But um, I bought this hammerhead before that. And I just haven't done anything with it. I just thought it would be cool to have a big ass railgun attached to something. Uh, and now that I'm thinking about it, do you know what it would be really good on the back of a battle wagon with a tail railgun? I think would be like a good, uh, good proxy for like a big kill cannon or something. That would be pretty sweet. But uh, typical me, full of ideas, really bad in the old execution. All right, so we need a polycap number one. And then we need A1 and D1. What's up with those sprues? More flexible polycap pieces. Way! And then A1 and D1. So that's that one. I love this armor shield piece. Always looks pretty cool. I do like it. I'm sure it saves nobody's height on the old uh, cartoons, but I'm uh, 
I do like the look of it. And then we need D1. Back to this one. Uh, connectory bit number 16. Po, 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 po. That one. Try not to ruin the parts. Da -da -da. Wrote some simple game and rules for Gundam kits. Ooh, interesting. Color me interested. Didn't Mark and Lorcan use Transformers to play Battletech at Gelcon? Or should they could make Gundam work? I'm sure, yeah. Th 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 you know what I mean? I'm sure there's, there's there's method to the madness. I'm only really interested in Zaku's. So I'm sure there could be rules made up for like give a guy a bazooka or whatever or ground attack dudes and jumping dudes or whatever. I'm sure it's doable. <laughs> it's all just a case of putting the effort in. Like I know Mark was talking to me about um, a Gundam kit battle with people where you'd like knock kits off of the table and stuff, depending, you know, something like that. He was he was giving me a rough gist of it. I told him I was like, oh, I would be game both. You wouldn't think knocking a Gundam kit off of the uh, a gaming table because they've got like flexible bits anyway. As opposed to like a Warhammer miniature. Could you imagine you played Warhammer and every time you like your your miniatures got killed on the battlefield, your opponent got to pick them up and just drop them on the floor? <laughs> like I'm pretty sure orcs wouldn't be too bothered. They're pretty robust. And Space Marines are, are pretty damn robust robust as well. But a lot of the kits that GW have been doing these days are very sort of dynamic, shall we say. Uh, I don't think they'd fare too well. And I don't think people would bother with, uh, with painting too much at that stage either. It'd just be like layers upon layers of super glue over joints that have broken or... I don't know, I'm going to have to weather this bastard. Look at this shit. The Gundams look about old Inquisitor game scale. Um, I can't remember. I do have an Inquisitor Space Marine in my shed somewhere. The Shed of Shame. I should dig out as a comparison. Um, but they're, yeah, they're sizable. Wait, what? That's supposed to slide in there. All right, I see how this goes now. So there's rails up here to slide that piece in. Hmm. Boop. And then that clicks like that. Nice. Very nice. Let's go over that with a flower. Right, and we've got this govensy bit here. What connects to there? Ha <laughs> ha! That really needs to be foiled now. Yeah, I'll hit it with plastic glue later. Uh, and now his fist. F, F, and A1. Uh, I know what piece on the A1. It's this one. There's five. That's exactly the same. Weird. So we have A1. And then we're moving on to F spring. Where did I put it? Where are the hands gone? Where's my F screw? A, B, C, D, E. Where's F? Oh, Jesus, I've lost the screw. How did I manage that? Do F. Aha! Of course, it's the big feck off gun screw. What fist will we put on them? Pew pew fist. One that's holding a gun of some sort. So this one doesn't have the index finger. So I reckon that's probably for the bazooka or something. We'll do this one. 
Oh, what one did we do? We did the open hand one. Is there another open hand one? I don't think there's another open hand one. We'll do... What's it telling us to do? It's telling us three and seven, so it's telling us this one and that one. Okay. We'll muck around. Well, you get loads of hands. That's another thing that I find, found kind of odd with all these kits is the accessories. So there's like two different axes. So there's like a little axe and there's a bigger axe. Then there's like this bazooka thing. Then there's like the big, it's not a 50 cal for a uh, Gundam kits on a skull. And then it's got like a load of little pods. And then there's another sprue of guns. And there's a slight difference between the two of these, which I'm sure Lorcan or someone who actually knows Gundam would be able to tell you. But apart from this one takes like a round magazine clip on the top. And this one doesn't seem to. I have no idea what the difference between these two is. And uh, they are very similar, but not the same. So you get like loads of little bits and pieces and gubbinses and what was it? Number three. We're supposed to be cutting this piece out. I'm getting distracted too easily again. Way too easily. Hey, Squig Boss, Mad Knobs is here. What is the crack? And it looks like Mark has arrived. If you feel you scratch built more than one. What's this? Mark wanted people to physically model damage by smashing them, but nobody agreed with him. <laughs> Why not, man? Be hilarious. No, that was Forge World. Mm -mm. Tomax are pretty sweet, jokes aside. Prime models for walking up to. True. I did eventually scratch bit out of one of the hamster broad model in clay and balsa wood, says Lorcan. Mark wanted people, yeah, to, to physically damage them. Mark is saying they were cowards. I think I put my money where my kit was by buying the titanium kit. Is this like one of these big, uber expensive kits and you were willing to have it knocked on the table? Because I, I can kind of can kind of understand. Like some of the kits, it's like, yeah, the basic kit that's like 10 quid. That, that you know, it wouldn't bother me too much. Like the plastic they're made of. Like what what are these guys gonna lose? Like I reckon this dude, if you were to throw him on the floor, maybe he'll lose a fin. But like if a limb comes off, it's all like there's flex in them. They're very You know what I mean? They're made of plastic. And there's a flex to them. So there's not a lot of inertia. And they're flexible. So I can't really see it being too much of an issue. You know? Maybe a piece will come off. Like an armored piece of his armored skirt might pop off and go flying and then maybe you won't find it. Like, see that being a potential problem. But apart from that, you know what I mean? It's like, there's not there's not much weight to the, to this one. You know? So I don't see it being too much of an issue. But whereas if you had a kit that was made out of resin or metal, yeah, it would just explode into pieces. I, cu I could understand people's reluctance at that stage. Great Kerbomer saying, Gundam kits are too clever for their own good. It's so cool watching them go together. Yeah, man, they're they're fun to put together as well. They really are. They are fun to go together. I think, uh, you know, some of the wargaming uh, companies could learn a thing or two by actually sitting down and looking at some of this other product. You know, and it's like, ooh. Some very crafty shenanigans going on. They're very clean castings. Very clean sprues. Which is what I like about them. I suppose, like, the fact that people don't necessarily paint them also would bring other aspects of model design in. So it's like where you're going to be cutting off the sprue, you really want to try and hide it a bit more. I can understand that. Especially if the, you know, people aren't going to be painting them. Um, I can see that being more of a priority than wargaming, for instance. That's the first thing that seems to come to my mind. Like here, I'm sure like professional gunman builders uh, would be absolutely reeling at the prospect of death. Now, Mr. Polycap. Oh, that's not a polycap. Get in there. I flexed a bit. 
outwards. And then there's his arm. There's his tutter arm. Uh, boop. So there we go. He's no longer armless. Ha 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 He's just a midget. No legs. No running away. We'll get there though. Right, so feet are next. Now these ones are interesting because the previous ones I built, their feet were just kind of like two pieces and a load of connectors, but there's actually some articulation in this kid's feet, which, you know, if I kept it on camera and not hidden behind, you know what I mean? Remind myself to put it here. Definitely. Have a sip of the LR and see what the comments are doing. Okay, say, Mark, I only built the one union. I intended to do more, but time got away from me. Mark is saying he loves the Zaku weapons and the fact that they carry the reloads on the shield. On the shield? So the reloads go here? So that's what they are. I thought they were little rocket pods. These are reloads then, aren't they? Yeah, it couldn't be like explosive reactive armor then at that stage. If it blows up, it'll blow out. Not the end of the world. The round clips is anime style. The other one is manga style. It's bell fed one I was telling you about. Oh, right. So that's why I've got um. Man, you're saying stuff. Where is it? So it's like one rubbery kind of sprue, one polycap sprue or whatever. Yeah, this yoke here was like this. This belt. Yeah, makes sense now. So it depends. I have no idea which. I think the bell fed one looks cool. I might, might do the bell fed one. I don't know. Is that coming out of his backpack? Or is there probably, there's probably bits, there's slots underneath the backpack. So maybe it comes out of the bottom of the backpack or something. Ah, we'll have to see. All the little gums is. But yeah, I was wondering what the hell this thing was. I'm like, ah, it's all making sense now, Lorcan. <laughs> I'm not going to send some of us painter kits to Wayne. Basically, uh, Zeong at this point. Basically, it's just a flesh wound. You could put some tape on your cutting mat where your webcam covers it. Here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did at one point. I used to put a box, but then I kept cutting the thing. So it's like I put a visual box there. I know exactly what you're saying. We keep changing the format. Every now and then, Windows needs to be reinstalled on my PC, and then it wipes everything, and then I reset up profiles. And I change the camera angles and stuff like that. Um, so that's why things get out of whack. You think like nearly 60 episodes into doing these hobby hangouts, I have it down to a fine art? Not so much. <laughs> Those slots indeed where the ammo box goes. Hey, I thought as much. Not just a pretty face, you see. Right, feet. I want to give them feet so we are, so we can... Leave our subject on the operating table. In shot. Tells me to build two sets at the same time. Two. Right, so. Ba -ba -ba. E1. E1. This is already flawed. Do you know what? I'll just go. It's already fallen off. It's annoying me. It's fallen off the sprue. Number 12. Remember that's 12. We'll put it over there. Right, so we're going to need E1, number 3, number 2, number 1. Alright, so we'll follow Lorcan's advice. We'll build the two of these at the same time. I would assume his feet are going to be the same. On either side. I do like the asymmetrical part of their shoulder pads for the the Zaku's. The shield on one side and the sort of uh, spike shoulder pad on the other. I've always thought, you know, I always thought that's kind of looked cool. As soon as I saw them, I was like, they look cool. Those other ones look like cheap ass toys. <laughs> And that's why I started making Zaku's. I was like, yay. I'm 
I'm sure some people are hashtag triggered now. How dare you, sir? How dare you? Right. Um, that's the front part. This foot is a hell of a lot more intricate than the other kit I made. There's way more parts to it. Like, the previous Aku kits, it's literally just bottom foot part, top foot, and then there's a piece for the connector to sit in inside here, and then it just sort of slots in. You get me? You dig? It was still possible and fun. What is that bit off? That must be the shins or something. Or calves. Sorry, I'm looking at other bits on the spring. I'm like, that looks like it's probably his calf. And these are like lower leg parts. Ooh. And these are for his toes and his foot. So number one's got to be, this is the last piece in it. But I'm just going to snip it all off now instead of putting the sprue out and putting it back and putting the sprue out and putting it out. I'm going to try and streamline some of this a bit. Get cracking. So some of you are doing infinity stuff. Some of you are cracking on painting orc stuff. Is anybody else building a Gundam kit? And he's been chipping away at stuff like that. E1. Alright, so that's it. I reckon I'm going to need that. This is the leg section. I'll leave that within arm's reach. Poly cap number seven. Numero seven. Phase two. So poly cap sprue number seven for both feet. Snip, snip. Seven. Probably helps if I move the mic over a bit. So I'm actually aligned with where the camera's going. Probably. And then, okay, so seven goes up into this one. Like so. Okay. Do a bit of cleaning on that. Oof. Rough. Yeah, I used to be uh, against building stuff on live streams. Last time I did that, I managed to stab myself in the leg, so I was like, mm, mm. wielding blades. Not a good idea. But I've gotten used to it. I found it very distracting trying to build a Lego kit on streaming at the same time. Like I was missing steps and make, messing it up. So there's certain things I, I found my, my brain is able to multitask with and there's other parts, not so much. So like fine detail painting, can't really do that. This seems to be doing all right. Not too bad. I mean, I'd be building it a hell of a lot faster if I was just building it and not looking at chat and chatting away or making sure I'm still in frame when I do bother to pay attention and I'm still in frame. And you're mostly just seeing this hand at this point. But, uh, still good crack. Um, Tina Connie is saying, is that how you pronounce it? I've had a HG Sin, Sinaju for ages. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Waiting for my skills to develop before I attempt to paint it candy red. Ooh. I have no idea what a Sinaju kit is, or if, if that is indeed how you pronounce it. What? Is it a... Painted candy red. Are you going to airbrush it, or are you going to... Uh, are you going to paint with brush? And what paints do you plan on using? Are you going to do it like a metallic color, and then are you going to do... Uh, candy over top because i know that's how a lot of people do ghost effects they'll do like designs in white or off white underneath they'll do like, like a base coat and then they'll do designs and then they'll do the candy on top so it'll have sort of a, a ghosting effect great primary scene and editing as i watch look at this man he never stops walking this lad i'm telling you all right okay so there's damn bits of his feet 
make the bee sprue. Right, so one, two, three, that's four and six. So both of these, okay, these parts. So this is what I mean, like the last kit I did, this is all one piece, but there's a point of articulation in this now, which is cool. Do they do basic Zaku's, like the green ones, do they do them in this kind of updated kit? I'd want to, I'd want to get my hands on like a new version. Like, is there, is there this version of these dudes? Because I was advised, I bought these and, and this guy at the same time. I bought the ground war kit, so that's why I have um, the weird double barrel tanks, whatever they're called. Oh yeah, they're over there. So I bought the ground war kit, so that's why I have the tanks as well. I think I was actually messing with the marker on one of the turrets. Is it this one or the other one? No, it is. It's this one. So I was trying to do the uh, the grey panel line marker on the underside of the turret. I don't know if you're able to tell as much. But um, yeah, I bought the ground war kit uh, because it came with uh, one of these dudes with some extra stuff like a big Panzerfaust and a bazooka and stuff. But did they do this Zaku in like this up-to-date sort of kit? Um, I think that's what I need to get my hands on next. I like these guys. These are cool. But um, I'd like to get more detailed versions of the green Zaku's. I think they're ground units. Orkrum was saying to me, and then you can get ones with jetpacks or something like that. Or I don't watch the cartoons. I've watched the unicorn one, but that's about it. Um, I did go looking for more Gundam stuff on Netflix to watch, just to sort of uh, see what's what. Um, I like the big space battles when they sort of shoot the uh, when you anti ship rifles, and it just sort of it's like shrapnel blown holes in the big battleships like yeah i thought that that bit was pretty awesome Doo -doo -doo. sinaju that is how you pronounce it all right i did the rg sinaju a while back and airbrushed the red and then did a gloss coat on it walked the treat oh nice is the suit full frontal pilots Full frontal pilots in unicorn. Sinaju. Is that the black one? Can't remember. Or is that the one um my brain is trying I don't remember the name of any of the characters. There's like a green one with like that has little laser cannons. One of the uh, Xeon f forces, sh she controls like little laser doodads and it has like a big cocoon part or whatever. Big like metal. I'm probably butchering the description here. Gundam fans are like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> no. But um, is that the one you're on about? Otherwise, psh, we're lost cause here, lads. Folks. I need to yap less and cut out feet more. So yeah, I'm not used to this point of articulation, but it's cool, I like it. What can I say? They do an origin style version of the Zaku from the Ground War set. Yeah, I think it's the C6. Mm. Is there a different Ground War set? Because the... I bought the Ground War set and it's the same as the other Zaku kit I bought. Which apparently is as old as the hills at this stage. But it was fun to put together. I reckon these are his knee pad bits. Apparently Mark can put these together without any instructions. I'm like, oh, fair play. That is interesting, Orange. Towing them a bit more. I know they do bigger kits as well, more detailed, bigger kits. If it ain't exactly what I don't want to know. <laughs> the 
fucking Jedi film. It's 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 scratching an itch for me. I don't know what it is. I'm not like like I said, I'm not really big into the cartoons, but I do enjoy putting the kids together. I like the look of them. The local comic book store was doing a sale on some of the stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'll throw 50 or 60 quid at this, see if I like it. And if I don't, well, then I'll have a robot that looks cool, you know? But they're fun. They really are. Um, this was actually my first batch of purchases, I think. And I was like, eh. Right, why am I putting you here? You shouldn't be here. I'm focusing on your feet. Getting distracted once again. Right, so we're building both of them at the same time. So. I'll go there. I'll go there. What holds these two together? Oh, you must connect all... Ah, you hold them together. I see now. So that slots in there and connects into there. Right, cool. Okay, so these bits... We'll go in over these bits, but we'll clean up... Crappy tab parts first. Get his foot done. So we will. The green one with the little cannons is the Kishantria piloted by, by Marita Cruz. Uh, you can see the difference between the GW Zaku kit and the Origin you're currently building. Yeah, you really can, man. Always disassemble good line kits before painting. I've seen that where people. Um, you want to get the armor plates a different color? Kind of makes sense in how intricate they are. So what happens on that front then if you're wanting to paint it? Do you, you build the kit for so you do what I'm doing? Where you build it? And then you decide I'm going to eventually paint it. And then you disassemble a kit. Mask off the parts you need to mask. Um, paint what bits what need painting. And then reassemble it again. Is that what you... Is that the sort of standard practice in that regard with the kits? Or, like, how do people go about it? I suppose different people have different methods, but I'm sure there's a kind of a standard. I suppose the best way to go about it would be, like, um, build it initially and get it painted as you build it. That must have been misaligned. Try that again. Now that's some clever engineering right there. Whoops. The other part will capture that and clip it together. Watch, bet you. But this bit. Yeah. Sweet. I'm liking the terracotta colour of it. I'm really confused though. About. I'm confused about this kit. This one. Zaku Tio SD Gundam Cross Silhouette DCS. I I'm I'm a bit curious. I'm like, why why is it pink? <laughs> I mean I've nothing against pink. I'm just like, wh why is it pink? I thought it would have been red. I want to get this one by the way. I want to get the Zaku too. I'm just like, I thought it would have been red, but it's kind of this peachy pink, which is fine. I don't mind. I'm just curious. Why why is, why is this kit pink? <laughs> I'm really uh. Really at odds with it. I thought it'd be red. Not the end of the world. Give it a bash. Let's have a leap in design. He's saying, yeah, Duane, I got really reflective chrome by Alclad 2. Then it was gonna airbrush Tammy Clear and red over it. Ooh, not to keep on spraying the Alclad since it's lacquer based. Ah. Black one is presumably the Banshee piloted by Bermuda and later really I think so. It's the other psycho new one MacGuffin I don't know. It's the other MacGuffin one, you know. Plot armor psychic stuffing. I don't know what it is. Whatever the shtick about that is. That was the only thing I really didn't like about the Gundam Unicorn or Unicron. Was this whole psychic medu for stuff? Probably need to watch some of the older stuff. 
Aha. One foot. More polycap stuff. Of course there's more polycap stuff. Right, so that's the basic design of the foot. Now I just need to replicate it there on this one. Put it on. So I'll put that there. And I'm counting this bit off. Look, I'm saying foot photos is a guy with lots of blonde hair and a face mask. Clearly, he didn't leave an impression on me if I can't remember him. Um, I, I probably watched it like eight months ago and can't remember. Great promo saying one of the gun moms of Bob had a QR code on the box for watching a snippet of the cartoon featuring that kit. You can see if it's cool before buying it. I love it. That is sweet. Here, you can watch the episode in which this Zaku was destroyed. I'm like, sign me up. That will be entertainment. What was the other one? I think I was looking at Lego kits. And then I think Lego have a... Is it like AR or VR thing where you can you can project it? with if You you can hold your phone up and it will show you the the kit. So, like, you can see what the kit actually looks like. I think there were some other products were like that. And I was rather impressed with that as well. I thought that was pretty cool. You know? Because I'm a sucker for Lego Star Wars. I was, uh, the missus was asking me what else I want. Uh, what, what, what else? Well, what do I want for my birthday? Um, and she got me some of the... Uh, Sort of the busts. There's like the Lego Toy Fighter and the Lego Stormtrooper. She got me, uh, she got me a couple of them, and I was like, these are actually really cool. You could, you know what I mean? There's a couple of more in that series. I think if, if you're looking to get me uh, a birthday present this year, I was saying to her, feel free to get me more of them. They are pretty swank. So fingers crossed, we get more of them. I did rather enjoy it. Uh, I've only built the Toy Fighter pilot helmet so far. I don't know if everyone watched the episode. It was on another hobby hangout, but I have a Stormtrooper kit. Toy Fighter is directly behind the uh, camera, but they're cool. They're not too big. Hold on, I grab it. They're not too big. They're pretty cool. I like it. Sort of uh, just kids, fighter pilot, and uh, she was like, "Yeah, I thought you'd like the black and the white one. I didn't know if you'd like the uh, the greenish one." I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's that's more jam." I always like the bad guys, as you can tell. <laughs> Mark I he's assembled, then disassembled, then mask and paint myself. Mark I he assembles, then he paints. Uh, Nick is saying he builds it and calls it done. I, I would have thought as much, Nick. One and done. Uh, looking for the D sprue now. So the little footies, they can sit over there for a sec. We've got these bits will go there once we build the other section on the front toe. Right, so there's a joint that goes in there. And I don't mean to type your spark up neither. Um, so there's polycap. So where's our polycap sprue? Polycap number three. So polycap sprue. I take it this polycap sprue is um, is used in quite a lot of kits, is it? I would have thought it's it's used in a lot of kits through the ages because it looks very familiar to the last polycap sprue I used with those guys, but maybe. Maybe not. I'm not too sure. Like, did I use the same polycap sprue on a lot of them, or is there a couple of different polycap sprues? I take it if there's a sp very specifically unique. Fair bit of flash on this bit. If there's a very specifically unique um, kit, it might require unique connections and joins, but then a lot of these look pretty <laughs> universal. Like, this is, you know. This one, and then we just need bits off of the D sprue. 
51 and 2, 1, 22, 7 and 8. Yeah. That's parts and brackets. Can you build this more than one way? 1 and 2. There we go. Why does it go like this one here and then this one underneath? In a different bracket. Are parts optional? Alright, so we have D1, number 7, and number 8. That one. Mm -hmm. D2, number 7, and number 8. Oh, there's a second D2. Is there? There is! Hey. Never mind me. I'm just losing the plot. Okay, so these two go together. For a second I thought maybe there was a difference in the feet for various builds. I don't know. I was like, surely not the feet. It would be like some sort of external part. That would be hilarious. This one wears different shoes. Alright, so polycap goes in there. So that's D1. And D2. 7 and 8. And polycap goes in between these two parts as well. I think I reckon I'll keep on trucking on this one. It may run more than two hours. A hangout. But that doesn't bother me. I'd rather get them done at this stage. There can't be much more of this kit what needs building. I think a lot of it's just like peripheral stuff like weapons. Boop, 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 boop. Um, you should totally spray your Gundam Grey. Look, they're saying Gundam was fairly hard sci-fi by standards in the late 70s and everyone thought psychic powers were real at the time. So there are psychics in UC Gundam. Oh, okay. Was this like a... Sort of... An 80s thing, was it? Where there's a lot of psychics. Um, I suppose you see it in the likes of uh, Akira and stuff like that. You know, sort of... The next tie-in to... Uh, human evolution. Seems to... You know, psychics seem to be... Uh, that sort of theme. It's like, oh, it's the next evolution of man. That type of thing. All right, so, oh, that doesn't actually rotate. That's weird. You can go like that. That is. Oh, okay, so the foot connects in there, and then this top plate will go in there, and then the actual leg will connect into there, I reckon. Are these exactly the same? These look exactly the same on either side. Okay, so. Let me chip away at it. And enjoy the build. It tastes good crack, you know. Pale Orc. Hey, bud, what's the crack? What's the story, Pale? I saw you had a uh, Twitch stream the other day there, bud. Your first one. I uh, threw you a follow. I uh, I didn't manage to catch it live, I'm afraid, but I, uh, I did throw you a follow. I think me and Dredd are supposed to be playing on the tabletop. Tournament, are we? Supposed to be playing each other. It just hasn't happened. The planets have not aligned. Probably need to get the finger out on that one. And get it done. I have not forgotten. Boop, boop. When, what, why did you get in the Gumpla? Personally, I like it as a break from 40, the 40k army grind. I got into 
Gundam kit not long ago. It was like eight months ago, nine months ago, and it's a case of how to put this without you know annoying people or something. I'm trying to think. I'm not as in love with 40k as I used to be, and I'm sort of putting the feelers out a bit. You get me? Um. Um, certain individuals who are also into battle tech, like Mark and Lorcan, are also into Gundam stuff. Um, so when they, I think, like Mark was sharing, uh, I think it was Mark. It's all Mark's fault. Mark was sharing. Um, there was a discount going um, in the local comic store. Where is this connector go for a second? The local comic store, and I just clicked on and I had a peruse and. I've come across Gundam kits because I like um, I like watching YouTube videos about different types of building, so like scale model stuff or like Gundam stuff. Because I'm always kind of interested. I like learning stuff. I al I always sort of like watching um, tips and tricks and stuff. Is this supposed to bend more, or what's the crack with this? Bend you bastard. So I was up for technique so i knew about like people using markers and stuff on their gundam kits and i thought that was pretty cool so i've, I've been always kind of interested in the building aspect of it and um, why is this not going down brute force aha that is snug is that gonna come up oh jesus had a push all right. Um, so yeah, I thought they looked cool. Uh, Mark shared that there was a discount going, and I had a passing interest. I knew of Gundam kits, and that's why I personally got into them. Uh, I bought, like literally, this is the first Gundam kit I ever got. I just like the look of these dudes. I like the look of the Zaku's. I can tell the difference between these. The ground war kit it was slightly lighter in tone and plastic for some reason. But I, I think these guys look cool. And then when I discovered that the bad guys and they're killed off by the dozens, I'm like, I love them even more. <laughs> because I love like TIE fighters and you know I like chaff units. They seem more realistic to me. I'm not a fan of you know I'm I'm not a fan of uh, characters and stuff where it's like plot armor saves the day or or whatever. You know what I mean? I I I kind of maybe it's because um, they seem more grounded and realistic to me. I don't know. I haven't really delved deeply into that, but um, I always kind of like um stuff that gets killed off kind of easily. I'm not into like uh, the hero kills everybody. You know, one guy stands against everyone. That's just me personally. It's it's not my cup of tea. I, I know some people probably love it. There's a connector in there. That's why that is a bit of a pain. I know some people love that stuff. You know what I mean? The hero defeats all. But I'm not... Like, even when I was playing Warhammer, I'm not into Hero Hammer. I want to see armies fight. You know? I don't want to see your one guy just chew through a whole army by himself. That's very sort of boring for me. Um, personally, so I I have an affinity for uh, for the Zaku's. I like the look of the kit. I think they look awesome. And uh, yeah, I fell in love with them. Then when they're like, "Oh, these are the chaff deals," I'm like, "Sign me up." Saying there's a few different polycap sprues that the numbers always represent the same caps. I think the brackets are representing the same part on different sprues because you need to do it twice. Ah, great program, Shannon. I sent my first gun plow by a friend that blew me away. It didn't take me away from 40k, but it did make me wish there was a little more posability in GW stuff. Yeah, that's that's the really strange aspect for me for my brain to get around is like it's it's building a kit. It's like okay, I'm used to this, but then there's you know points of articulation, so it's. You're building a kit, but it's also kind of an action figure at the same time. And I'm like, okay. You know what I mean? Like, my head's a bit, huh? 
I'm used to building something and it's a static piece and then you have to paint it up and then you just, you know, you use it. Like, you'll be lucky if there's a turret that gets the torn. Most of the time there's not moving parts. Oh, Pale was saying the league's up. Sorry, Pale. Sorry. <laughs> the league's over. Oh, it, it was uh, it was good playing people. Um, um, yeah, it was good. It was good being involved. It was good crack. Fair play to you for, uh, for organising it. Cheers, bud. D1. D1, D1. Now that's D2. Left leg. All right, so the leg is made out of a few pieces, it seems. All right, so if this is the left leg, surely there should be parts for the right leg on this as well. Get the right leg to work. Or do you only use at the same time? To hell with it. Are they exactly the same? They are exactly the same. Right, we're building two at the same time. 15, 14, and 14. This part here. Do, do, do. Okay, so you got his force gun on kit around 2000. Back when the wing kits were all over toy shops in Dublin. I'd known about them for a few years beforehand. I really wanted to try them out. Hmm. Great promo saying, Mark is saying the great promo, you should get the marine model kit that fills both fixes. The McFarland one, is it? I've seen the McFarland one where people have been 3D printing stuff for it. I mean, if they had a 40k orc one, I'd buy it, but I pretty much despise anything in power armor, so it's like, it's not my cup of tea at all. I am not into space marines at all, at all. For some odd reason. <laughs> but, um, I mean, if they made an orky one, that'd be cool. If they made, like, a Meganob one. That would be pretty sweet. What's this pit up here? Oh, that's for the... Is that for the other arm? I think that was the other arm. The shoulder connector. Whoop. So these are for your leg, apparently. Is this the hip joint? This might be the hip joint. Uh, I don't know. I haven't built one of these before. I'm thinking this might be the hip joint. Is there a big ball and socket? Piece. What's that bit for? Leg. More leg. Yeah, all right. I might as well cut these bits off as well when I'm at it. Save me having to come back. But I'm really, yeah, like the casting on these is, is really impressive. The sprues, or the runners, as Gundam folk call them. They're, uh, they're really good quality, man. Very crisp. Uh, what is that bit for? Very crisp casts. Good detail, man. I do like that about them. 24. Oh, that's the calf. Right, I'm sort of looking ahead to see if I need to cut this other bit off. I don't think I do. But we're going to do both legs at the same time. Do, do, do. We'll go back there, and then we'll cut all of these bits off here. And we'll get both legs built at the same time. Lork and Nagel. I pretty much despise anything in power armor. My kindred spirit right there. <laughs> We need to get some GMs to do the Federation equivalent of the Zaku. The GMs? It's GMs. GMs. What do they look like? Are they the... Bog standard D builds. So what the hell are these? Then? Oryx 782 Gundam prototype close combat mobile suit. So these aren't GMs, I take it then, no? These aren't L Bog standard O's. This is like... The plot armor is thick with this one. Yeah, I'm going to blow this one up, by the way. I'm just boring it. He will be blown into pieces. Where's your plot armor now, bud, huh? It's going to be glorious. I mean, we could, you know, I suppose you could do it physically and just, like, metaphorically in modeling, but, you know. 
That's another thing I saw though with someone. Someone was doing some crazy weathering technique where they got like a metal tin and they stuffed all the uh, exterior armor pieces in and then they put like firecrackers in to get like proper weathering on them. I was like, you guys are mad. I love it. I thought that was amazing. Right, talk about dedication to the hobby. I want realistic, you know, explosions and born effects. Oh, you know, I'll stuff some firecrackers into a tin with my model kit. It'll be authentic. <laughs> I think the only other time I've seen something like that that was really cool was um, years ago. I think it was on like the History Channel or something like that, where there was guys doing model kits, and there was a dude doing a a U boat build, and he had the U boat kit, and it was like it was an electric one, so or a remote control one. I don't, yeah, I think it was battery powered or whatever. But he had a U boat kit. And he got the exterior of the hull. And he literally, like, got the hull of the U-boat. And he sprinkled it with iron filings, all right? And he left it out of his back garden for a couple of months. Just so that it would be, like, genuine rust on on the model kit. And I was like, that's brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. All right, so that piece... Turn that goes in there. Like that. Oh, that connector is bigger than that. Oh, this is one of those. I bet you this one's bigger on this side. Ah, there we go. Look. So really, I should connect here. I can always remember that though. Like the guy, guy going out of his way to like put iron filings on something and leaving it out outdoors. Obviously, if it's like a remote control submarine, you're not going to be coating it with paint. So we had to find ulterior methods of getting the rust effect he wanted and i thought it was genius looked pretty sweet in the end too what bit of the leg is this the knee cap is this the knee lower leg i have no idea that's the odd bill all right so if we built one we'll build two da -da -da -da. An hour ago, I bought two boxes of these elementals. Oh, yeah. It w look, it, they're not space marines, okay? Okay, fair enough. I, I like elementals. They're not... I hate space marines. There you go. I don't despise everything in power armor. I'll, I'll, I'll narrow it down to one franchise. I hate... I despise everything that is a space marine. In the Warhammer 40k universe. There you go. That, that'll that narrow it down for you, Lorcan. I despise Warhammer 40k space marines with a vengeance. I absolutely hate the bloody things. Hate everything about them. Everything. But you know, that bitterness took years to build up. You know what I mean? Good decade and a bit of being a 40k orc player. <laughs> I don't really hate them. I just, they're not me shtick. You know what I mean? They're not. Not me cup of tea. And I always find those conversations funny that people start, who would win in a fight, a space marine or an elemental? I'm like, oh, Jesus, here we go. Yeah, it's all, you know what I mean? It's like, well, who's, you know, one fan's going to say one thing and the other fan's going to say the other thing, and that's it. <laughs> Same with a lot of stuff. But yeah, they're clanners, they're filthy clanners. Of course, I, I despise them. Filthy clanner scum. But I'm sure they'd be fun to play. Oh yeah, I only went around to actually... Because I can't remember if I ordered it on mental boxes. I don't think so. I think I did, like, just mechs in the uh, Kickstarter. I thought these would have been different, though. But it's literally... When you buy a star of them, it's literally just... It's the same one again and again. But that's okay. You can muck around with them if you want. I don't know if I'll bother with it. Chopping and changing them. They're fine the way they are for me. They're fine the way they are for me. I know Mark was talking to me about, oh yeah, you could do some cool conversions and stick them on mechs and stuff. I'm like, that's actually not a bad idea. Whether I do it or not is another thing, but that does sound pretty cool. Sort of mid-transport them. It might take a bit of work to get them to... Are they like... 
because they're hooked on? Are they like magnetically grappled or do they just hold on to like, or they clamped onto the mech or, or what way is it for when they're transported? We're talking about Battletech clan mechs transporting elementals, which are sort of like power armored clanners, but they're not space marines, they're way cooler. You haven't got a head of really enjoyed the same super cool model. The engineer is insane. All the best. Catch you later. Cheers, bud. Thanks for dropping in. Lorca, no man. I love power armor. The gun name is the hero, Mick. Spoken like a fitty. <laughs> Essex is saying, I use some rusty old baked beans tin for some of my panels on my blood balls. Ah, oh, dude, I saw. You're like using like party straws for guttering and like two ploy cardboard with like the exterior layer peeled off and. That stadium looks amazing, man. Absolutely cracking walk. I'm going to have to get out to yours one, once, you know, things get back to some form of normalcy and uh, get a game in when the lads are there. And it has to happen. Get a game on that stadium. It looks sweet. Definitely. You can tell it's a labor of love. You can tell when somebody builds something and then they, do you know what I mean? They've just sort of embraced the hobby and gone nuts with it and just enjoyed it as well. It's always sort of, those type of projects always spur people on, I feel, to, to do something themselves, you know? It's like, that looks sweet. I want something like that myself. I can, I can always sort of, it's kind of like the hobby distilled down into a physical object. You get me? It's an embodiment of it. I, I like I like projects like that. Where it's a real labor of love. All right, Mr. Polycap number one. Oh, there's two Polycap number ones. We got enough Polycap number one. Uh, hold on. Oh, there's eight Polycap ones. All right, for a second there, I thought I only had two of these left. I was like, uh... Again, with the, uh, you know, not being great at multitasking, but it is what it is. Right, so we have this part. There's one of them going this way. them in there yeah get in your bastard look at the bleeding state of that part there jesus i thought i cleaned that one goes there and one goes there and then push it together. Oh, that's the plan anyway. Whether it works out or not is another thing. Hey. So what's this? Is this the top of the hip? Just go up there. Thinking that's that part of the leg. Thinking that's the hip. Could be wrong now, but that's what it looks like to me. Oh, can I say I'm planning to chop and change elementals when I get around to painting mine? Omnimex have specific handholds designed for battle armor. There are some battle armor suits that have magnetic clamps that let them hook onto anything like the Capellan fash or whatever. Essex is saying he'd love to have a few games soon. Of course, Essex. Of course. When we're able to. When we're all vaccinated and we're allowed to go to places, I will be going to places. But only when I'm allowed, not before. You know? I am looking forward to initially getting to play Battletech with the lads. 
in Dublin. That will be awesome sauce. Hopefully by then, wave two of the Kickstarter comes and I am absolutely buried in plastic mix. That'll be good crack. A lot of clan stuff. Boop, boop, boop. Mostly inner sphere stuff. I think most of the mechs I order are inner sphere. Uh, but I've got at least one of every lance pack coming. Multiples of some of them. I did order the direct fire lance twice. I do remember that because I wanted two atlases. How much I do remember. And I ordered a shed load of t-shirts because I was like, ah, oh, sure, if I'm going to have a new wardrobe, it might as well look cool. <laughs> um... Yeah, I, I ordered a lot of stuff in that Battletech Kickstarter, but that's mainly because I was like, I'm paying shipping on stuff. I'm not going to get the opportunity to buy, like, I'd like to buy stuff off of Catalyst website, but you know what I mean? Shipping and customs and whatever. Not going to get the opportunity to uh, buy a lot of it. So I was like, ah, oh, sure. Why not? In for a penny, in for a pound. It's going to be my new go-to game. I might as well go the whole hog. Alright, so there are leg pieces as well. Are they there? And they're still on the sprue. Right, they're chipping away. <laughs> Logan Nagel. Wave 2 will absolutely be here before the lockdown is listed. Most of it is on route and arriving in the hubs at the moment. Oh, yeah. I mean, lads, like, if you thought the first unboxing video was good... Wait until you see the second one. <laughs> I think I won't do a live one. I'll just do a I'll do a recorded one and I'll I'll actually edit it. I think that was my main problem. That's why I kept saying I wasn't gonna read the comments or sorry for not reading the comments because I did it live originally the last time. But I got the unboxing knife at the ready. Um I got the fold out table. Whether it'll be able to hold the weight of this box, I don't know. Or I don't even know how many. I reckon it's going to be at least two boxes, though, mind you. Might be more. Might be three boxes of stuff. Because I reckon the t-shirts might come in a box by themselves. Because I bought all of them. As you do. Um, and then there's a lot of... There's a lot of boxes. So, yeah, it might be three. Two to three boxes. I don't think it's going to be one. Just volumetrically. The... Uh, the lance packs take up a fair chunk of space. And then we have... Then we have all the salvage boxes as well. There's quite a few salvage boxes. Hmm. It's going to be a lot of mix. Essex is saying, look, you're not already buried in plastic mix. Well, I mean, I have a few... But they all fit in the one carry case at the moment, so <laughs> that won't last. I'm buried in plastic orcs, but that's because I've had like 12 to 14 years of collecting orcs. What are we, 2021? When did I start collecting? 2008? Um, yeah, 13 years. So I've been collecting orcs for a lot longer. So you know, give it, give it time and the Battletech collection will get out of hand. Eventually. I'm looking forward to these multi-part plastic kits, though. That they, they look pretty sweet, man. Are they the same scale is the only thing I'd be asking? I'd be surprised if they weren't the same scale. That'd be a bit weird if they did a different scale for the multi-part plastics. Um, but the, that Black Knight, from what I've been seeing from the uh, the images that they're, they're sending out about the Black Knight, I'm like, no, it's looking good, like, you know? It's looking good. I'd like to see, uh, eventually, hopefully, we'll get a charger kit. Plastic. Yeah, I just like the charger. I think I think Mark gave me a charger 181 as just sort of like a, yeah, may maybe a joke or something like that. But I actually liked it, man. Like, you know, it, it, was, it was fun. You just sort of charge down the field and just pew pew people with your lasers. It's, what more could you ask for in life? Right, so, them bits go in there, pop, and they go in there, there are your legs, where's the connecty bit on the bottom? I 
Oh, there's the armor gauntlet on the bottom of that. Okay. Um. Can go like that. And that can go like that. Yeah, okay. Happy days. These are just sitting in the place. That's fine by me. No issues. Cracking. All right, so now on to the calf pieces. We're keeping on trucking, lads, and getting this thing built tonight. So we might be running about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes over. We're nearly there, nearly got the legs done. Uh, we've got like front sections and back sections, so we'll clip these off. Gray Primer saying there's a product called Real Rust for model innovations which uses liquid iron oxide, an accelerant and a neutralizer to put actual rust on model kits. I mean, that sounds amazing, but at the same time I'm like, what chemicals <laughs> what, what what chemicals are you putting on it? I mean I love rust, you know. I have enough rust pigments and rust primer and rust washes i think i've even got some like vallejo i, I love me some rust but uh, getting to actual rust um onto the miniatures um it's pretty hardcore i'll leave that to the scale model dudes it's a bit it's a bit too hardcore for me i'd, I'd be afraid I'd, I'd ruin it with a, another step you know what i mean later down the line like how's it gonna react to To other layers you might want to put on top mind you if there's like a neutralizer then it will be pretty inert by the time it is only iron oxide like but it's yeah that does sound hilarious i'm not surprised all right so we've got the front of the calves the back of the calves we've got these bits over here they're probably the lower leg sections are they I was going guess these go on something like that. Does he have massive kneecaps for no reason? <laughs> All the kneecaps. I was only thinking of like the novelty of things. How, how novelties like wear off. Like when I was thinking about the fire caps um weathering effect or i don't know what you'd call them like chinese firecrackers are you it's like um it's like a string of small little tiny they look like eeny weeny tiny sticks of dynamite and they, yeah they're like firecrackers and i was thinking to myself that you can't you can't like fireworks are illegal here um fireworks rockets bangers anything like that that's all illegal in the republic of ireland there's no um, there's no selling the likes of that here legally you know what I mean I wouldn't condone buying such things no 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 um, so I was only thinking to myself even if I wanted to do that weathering technique I can't actually do it here but it's, a, it's just funny like how when I was living in the UK you can just sort of go into Asda around Halloween and you can buy like rockets and, and, and the like just out of the store but I never bothered <laughs> because I think it was like initially it's like the, it's like anything with no novelty it's like initially the prospect of it I was like oh yeah you know what I mean I could buy loads of them if I wanted it and then you know you, you don't bother maybe you'll do it one year and you're like the novelty of of being able to buy you know firecrackers and such uh, I think for me it just like wears off pretty quickly you know I think a lot of the allure for some people is the fact that you're not allowed to buy it here. You know what I mean? The age old, you're not allowed it, therefore you want it more. I like the fact that the casting on this is on the side and not down the front, like the previous ones. I'll have to throw some uh, extra tin glue on those dudes and the 
get it sorted in. and get it put together sure there's some nice detail work come in here with the panels maybe with a bit of grey like I have some Vallejo washes I could try I think that's half the problem I'm having now is when you've only got one of something you don't really want to test it too much like I did it on the other side of the tank for the the crack but I can't just, what colour are these tanks supposed to be? I take it they're not supposed to be grey it's supposed to be a different colour but I was using the underneath of this turret as a test piece anyway they're both supposed to be metallic or um, like I've a good few Vallejo uh, armor colors so maybe OD camo bit of all a drab where's this armor piece on the back here <laughs> the massive kneecaps have a reason they're cool sure it's not like anti kneecapping technology no being dragged dra you know not being brought off up to the mountains for you <laughs> what were the little dudes in transformers called that ate metal and were attacking and, and roasting the autobots that's what real rust sounds like to me oh i know what you're on about i can't remember the name of them Scraplets. Ah, there's also the cosmic rust, but that wasn't sentient, just the disease. He's here to educate. <laughs> Sounds like Core City. Wanted because you can't have it. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. There's a there's a lot of that going on, especially with Games Workshop products, where it's like, oh, limited. You know, they're they're taking uh, they're taking fear of missing out sales techniques to the next goddamn level. It's it's pretty crazy, and I'm. I'm kind of happy in that regard that my attention isn't really on Games Workshop's products at the moment a lot. I mean, like, I'm interested in the Orc stuff, but that's about it. You know, I I really have no interest in anything beyond what they're doing for 40k Orcs at all. Because I just don't have the time for it. Like, you just... you. You, you'll end up too invested in my eyes. You know what I mean? They want you to just buy their product. So it's like, oh, this box set, you know. Like, I bought the Indominus box set and I held onto the rule book and I sold it for like 20 quid cheaper or whatever. So there's a lot of issues that people are having now where it's like, oh, I wanted to get this box, but I couldn't get my hands on it. And then there's a lot of backlash against people who are selling the box sets then at a marked up price so you know people are getting annoyed about that and you know it, it is what it is man when you're doing limited runs of products um these things are gonna happen like these things are gonna happen i'm you know i wouldn't be too happy with it myself i was interested in getting the box you know so i can understand people's frustrations uh, right okay so we're gonna put the Usually pretty much symmetrical. Okay, this goes on this leg. So I can understand. So there's a lot of uh, they call them scalpers is the terminology. It's all the scalpers' fault. I'm like, mm. this is what happens when you rely on fear of missing out techniques for selling your stuff too much, man. You know, I can understand in one regard. But I'm like, companies didn't do it as much as they, oh, that's where the house goes. If they didn't rely on it as much as they did, it wouldn't be as much of an issue. Uber kneecaps. Oh, okay, this is what this is. This is this thing. D11 or 12. And D1. D, okay, so it's this. So I knew this was the lower leg. I got a feeling. Great problem. If you make a mistake with the wash, you can always bung the gun them in Dettol. I don't know what Dettol would do to polycaps. Um, like the acrylic, the acrylic stuff is all right. Like this, this is okay. It's just acrylic. So like as you're putting it on, you can, you can just use water with it and another brush. I saw someone doing some really good stuff. So I'm thinking, like this white gun them. I've got a grey wash that I think will work really well for it. Um. 
where you can just have a brush that's wet and just feather it out. You know what I mean? Like you could come in and, and just feather it out a bit more um, and try and make it look good. But it's not the end of the world. If you're spending 10 euro on a Gundam kit, like, to me, that seems like a reasonable price to experiment with it. Whereas if I'm spending 60, 80 quid on a GW kit, I'm a bit more reluctant. You know what I mean? It's probably going to be the same with other Gundam kits where they get more expensive. But then you can buy a cheaper one of what you're trying to do and try out the techniques on that. You know what I mean? Use them as a... Not so much throwaway kits, but just sort of experimenting. Ah, that's where that bit goes. That's on the D spear, D1. It's the polycaps again. It's going to be his ankle joint. Uh, so we're going to need an old polycap one again. This is going to be his ankle connector down here. Right, so that's on that one. That one. It's this piece here. I was wondering what this was for. I wasn't too sure. I couldn't see it in the instructions. I reckon once you build one of these, the second one you'll build will be way faster. Way faster. Did I show you I was always messing around with, uh, with the markers? I was trying to mess around with the, the markers on a spare hand I had. So I was trying out some of the greens. And just sort of trying to do the shading in the hands and stuff. And I was trying to see what the color match was like on this part here. So it's not so much a highlight, but just sort of a, hey, I'll try this out. So I suppose it makes it pop a lot more. When compared to one that doesn't have anything done to it, if you get me. Trying to muck around with the darker green in the shade there and then leave the bare plastic as, as sort of the highlight. But I don't know. It's one little experiment. But it makes a, makes a bit of a difference. I don't know if you can see it that well. Maybe on the fingers. Really does not, uh, not look great on the camera at all. You just cannot see the color transition that much. I suppose it makes it pop out a lot more. If you get me. I suppose you could do a test with the polycap to empty sprue. This is true. You could always chuck this in that all and see how it reacts to it. See if it uh disintegrates. Turns into the Wicked Witch of the West. I'm melting, no! <laughs> this last thing you want to happen to your kit. Boop. Alright, you can go there. This can connect in here. And then this connects up here. Whoop. And now it kind of looks like a leg. Sweet. Oh, okay. That little kneecap bit just literally sits on there. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some of the kits painted up by... Uh, some folk and they look pretty sweet is that it that's all it's holding that on it's not very much well okay well it's snug fair enough it goes like so and then uh, no not that one the other one I think this one goes here okay that's how on the two parts there. It's just for the right leg, or if I put it on the wrong one? No, that's that's the wrong piece. This is the right piece. No, it's for the wrong leg. I can tell because that's the hose connector, and the hose connector is supposed to be there. So, 
burp, burp, burp. That comes off. Better I just cover that now without settling the whole thing. And then tries it again. No, that's the right piece. Hmm. Why don't you want to fit? There you go. Sweet. Yeah, that connection's way better. It fits like that. Super flared armor leg. <laughs> and then I'll do this other one. Go like that. Front section. I honestly think the instructions make this kit look a lot more complicated than it actually is. Like, the intricate build seems to be the core of it. Um, but once you build one leg, you're sort of... You get a rough idea with your design concept of how things go together. And then we... These parts coming off of the D2 sprue your lower leg and then the ankle next running off go to run friends catch you later in a week thanks for another great stream cheers bud i'll see you this wednesday i managed to miss you last wednesday my sincere apologies i will be there and uh i will be working on another kit this one is nearly done we're nearly there I mean, there's a few gun bits and pieces, but uh, I got the D2 sprue cleared out. There's a few bits and pieces. What's the polycap number one, I think we put in the heel of this? There's a polycap one. Did we cut one out already? I don't think so. Because I think there's one of these went in the shoulder, I think, or was that either? Oh, no, I think it was polycap one. So we have an odd number of them left. Hopefully I haven't lost one in the process. It's grand. Want to that's grand. Bip. Okay, so that's gonna go that away. Goes on forced. That needs to go onto that first, the connector. Clean off the excess. That one went forward. Not that it's a race, but kind of got a gist of what's going on now. Squash them together. They are super snug, man. It'd be helpful if I put the right place in the right place and not on the wrong side. Boom. So legs. And then he needs a kneecap. Oof, what needs a clean first? So we'll clean this off. Try the kneecap on. And that will be whoop, whoop, on the floor. Now I've got it. <laughs> Trolling things away, so I am. Trolling them away. Right, so a little kneecap goes there. Look at how well that goes together, man. Oh, there's two points of bend. So there's the upper bend and there's that one. Like, holy smokes. You get a fierce bend going on in them. I can see why this is as big as it was. And then it just sort of... That's really well designed. Goes back in. Okay, so... Foot. And then the 
other source. Have you ever broken a connector putting it into a polycap? Like if you've gone in too hard with it? I wonder if that happens. Ooh. And then we'll throw the legs in. And then after that, it's just like guns and stuff. Yeah, we'll build his guns. It's not much left. So that's that's him. And like the points of articulation compared to the other Zakus is pretty cool actually. So it's like you can do a bit of foot bending a little bit. If it wants to bend. Does it not want to bend? The toe must bend a bit. I mean is Waist is super loose. I think all right. The legs are actually pretty solid, surprisingly enough. Okay, doesn't the heel pops up a bit? Does it not? Guess I'm not bending it correctly. It's too solidly built. That's what the problem is here. We've built it too well. Kick the tank. Bop. They actually stand pretty well as well. Dude, the legs are pretty solid. I like them. His head is really small compared to the other kits. Or maybe the other kits, their heads are too big. But. You know what I'm missing? Leg tubing. Uh, where does four go? Five is on that side. So this is kind of flexible-ish stuff. Is this sprue made out of... Oh, it's not the same as the polycap. No. It's the so this stuff is kind of flexible, but I don't think it's made out of the same sort of material as the polycap stuff. Hmm. Maybe I'm supposed to have put it in before I built it. Maybe. But the legs flex. Haha. <laughs> All right, you bastard. Yeah, that is a snug fit. It does not want to come apart. Give me your leg. <laughs> so you just go and build them and then take them apart again. Yeah, this is a... Uh Well, what can it be easy to take apart again? They 
are snug. Come on, you lassie. Come on. Come on, Arlo. No, I think there's a connector lug there. That's why it's not letting me get the knife in. Sure, it is not. I am rather impressed at how well his legs don't want to come undone. There we go. Schnug. I'm putting the hose in the wrong way around. <laughs> I mean, okay. You've got leg houses still to do. I, uh, I know, Lorcan. I just about remembered at the the nick of time. I think the average time of the gun I'm club for a HG was probably four hours average. This is a HG, is it? I mean, like four hours of building out of kit. That's that's like win win in my eyes. It's entertainment at its finest. Trying an RG or an MG kit after saying that about the complexity. Are they higher grade kits? <laughs> Difference between this Zaku and the RG, maybe see. I knew that armor would come off. Similarly, between the ground war kit and this Zaku, maybe. Uh, I can skip. Ha, I got it. Mm. Should I put it that way? Oh. There we go. I need to take it apart. Oh, that works. This waste connection is crazy. There's a bit too much flex in it for my liking. Okay, so we've got our brake tubes done. That right? Why does that look like there's too much of a gap there? There we go. Alright. What is up with this waste? Is it supposed to sort of flex like that? I don't know. See if we can get them lined up. <laughs> this waste is crazy. Man. Uh, push it together. So I don't get why these bits move. For like mega pose mode or something. Yeah, the proportion seems different. Like his chest, like this, the scale's definitely smaller. Maybe the scaling on this one is more uh, in alignment or something. It's more correct or something. But like the head is definitely a bit smaller. But the hands seem about the same. It's the weird thing. Okay. I don't know if I'd wish the RG Zaku on anyone. You've got those legs, houses still. Yeah, it says the sprue, what each one is made out of actually ABS. Oh, okay. Is it written in Japanese what it's made out of or? PS? Maybe. 
Hmm. Some of the difference is because I'm moving the CAD, but also the Grand Wars I could use line art as a reference. Well, the origin one used CGI. Ah, okay. So that's the difference between some of the stuff, is it? Right, onto the guns. Anti ship rifle ASR 78 for a mobile suit. Right, so this is the big feck off gun. So this one. I'll give him the big gun. Boom. Because that's the first one it tells us to build. Kind of reminds me of um, an Action Man kit I had when I was a kid. That had like a big 50 cow kit in a, in a suitcase. It was like a mountain climbing Action Man or something like that. He had like his little rope and stuff like that. But he had like this little tiny, had a little black suitcase. And it was like, uh, it was like a big 50 cow gun. He's supposed to be like a mountain range sniper or whatever. F18 and F17. Boop, 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 boop. Where's 18 as well? This bit here. So this is kind of reminding me of it. It's similar dimensions, but it was like it was a broken down gun. It had like the barrel and like the bipod rest. And I thought it was pretty cool. It would have been about eight or nine or something. I can't remember. But it looked sweet. And then my brother, of course, brought it to school and lost one of the parts off of it. Because, of course, he did. That's what little brothers do. Borrow your shit without asking and lose it. <laughs> As is always the way. Right, so this sits into that and that slots into there. Is that it? There's no more extended -y bits. So there's a sticker that will go on there eventually. I haven't bothered putting stickers on anything yet. Uh, uh, I mean, he's not compensating for anything. You know what I mean? The gun is... Literally bigger than the Gundam. <laughs> Oh, uh, gotta love it. I think it tells us to build a different hand for it as well. It's gonna give a different hand build. Oh, that needs to be cleaned up. Not the end of the world. I can see myself painting this silver or something that isn't just the matte grey. Like, what colour is it supposed to be? Metallic or... Or a different colour? I have no idea. Or is it just supposed to be a grey? Because I'd have no issue with going over this with like a spray grey again. Sweet. That sits together pretty snug. Bit of Tamiya extra tin, a few clamps on that, that'll be grand. 
They're abandonish. It's a bit of abandonish. That on there, yeah. There's a there's a bit of abandonish, just a bit. <laughs> Probably notice some more that way. See at the end, from sort of this point on. I reckon it's because this is a thicker part here, but that could be uh. Yeah. Heat it up and fix the bit. I suppose if you glue in this half, it won't be too much of an issue. And it says 11 and 6. I think we have that hand on it. So this is the weird thing about these kits is they give you different hands depending on what sort of weapon you're giving it. So that's the wrong hand. This needs eleven. The F's four. So there's a piece. So this hand. Yeah, 11, because there's a piece in the gun. If you look at the gun, there's like a piece that slots into the palm of his hand, which is actually pretty crafty. I like that. It means that the gun isn't swimming around in his hand as much. So we'll do that one. And we can just rub the other piece off of this hand. A set of fingers without an index, which is this one. So do you guys just sort of like leave the hand on the weapon that goes with the specific weapon, or what way do you do it? Oh, the hands are actually a little bit smaller than these ones. Look. Just a little bit smaller. Some of the difference, yeah. See, this is why you used to watch the anime because you'd remember the scene where Shar fired a shell from that big rifle of the Federation ship and it basically acted like Claymore. Yeah, it's like it's just the gun where he fires it at the ship and it it does like loads of shrapnel damage, doesn't it? They sort of explode on the inside and all of it is like wrecks. And I just watched the fights here on the YouTubes. Yeah, I think I've watched the where he uses the anti ship rifle and he just wrecks stuff. They get enormulated. So this is a big stonk of gun. I can see someone nicking this gun for a... Uh, like a blood axe war boss. In 40k. I can definitely see that happening. Good tea, bastard. Hey. Oof. I'm 
that, folks. That's the end of that build. Boop. <laughs> it's like trying to get all of it going in frame. It's a... Uh, yeah, it's built. Funsies. Cool. Feels like it's missing something, though. Oh, you can put the ammo on. <gasps> Look at the bazooka. Oh, Jesus. Look at that. That looks swank. So it does. But we're at half 11. So I'll build a bazooka another time. I will be going to... Uh, or IGA Discord on the Wednesday. Looks sweet though. But uh, I could definitely see an orc robot rocking one of these. Definitely. Like it's the right size. <laughs> but yeah. If you've been building long and enjoyed yourself. Uh, cheers for sticking around. Um, we'll be doing another hobby hangout next Sunday. I uh, haven't quite decided what we're going to build yet. If you have ideas of what you'd like to see built. I have a few Gundam kits. I have some Lego, I have some 40k stuff. We have a few bits and pieces we could knock about. I hope you all managed to get a bit of hobby done. Um, or at least we're entertained for a short period of time. And I'll catch you in the next one. Uh, next Sunday, same time. Usually 9 till 11, but I wanted to finish this guy. This is why we ran a little bit later. And uh, yeah, I think it looks sweet. Pretty cool. Orc war boss holding the anti ship gun with a grad at the far end holding it up as a bipod. Uh, now you're now you're thinking along the right line, Orkin. You, now you you've got the orky spirit going. Definitely, I could definitely see a grot being stuck to the other end, where you're sort of tied to the barrel as the bipod. Is there a bipod for this? Scratch build a bipod for this. It's not a bad idea. Though. Probably go there. Hmm, it's not a bad idea. But yeah, cheers for joining, folks, and I'll uh, catch you in the next one. Make it easy. <laughs>